custom resources in Godot 4. What are they and how do we take advantage of them? Let's start with what resources are. Resources are essentially data containers. They can hold properties, functions, and signals. This is what a resource looks like in code with three example properties. Now, resources don't do anything on their own. They only hold data for nodes to use. You can't attach a resource to the node tree, for instance. It has to be a property of a node. Let's look at the code and see how we do that. We'll look at a proper example later in the video. There's one important thing you need to remember when using resources. The resource only gets loaded into memory once. So every time you load the resource, it's the same copy. The resource file gets loaded and it will keep that one resource in memory for other nodes to use. If you try and load the resource again, it won't load the file, but the engine will just grab the resource which is already loaded in memory. But what if you don't want that? Let's say you have a node with a resource that you instantiate a bunch of times and you want the option to adjust the resource for each individual node. There is a checkbox in Godot that you can enable called local to scene. This will make it so each node that gets instantiated has a unique resource that you can adjust without changing any of the other resources. An example for this scenario is loot items that can drop with randomized stats. You add the item as a resource, but its stats should be unique to that item when you instantiate it. Otherwise, every loot item of that type will have the same stats. Now that we know what resources are, how can we use them? Let's jump into an example project in Godot 4. The only thing I've added is a node 3D called game with a node 3D world node and a canvas layer node called UI. I've also added a select screen with three buttons, which we can use to select our character class and also connected the button press signals to empty functions. We'll fill those in later. Okay, let's make a resource that holds the stats for our player character. Let's go here, create a new script, call this character stats, then go here and it should inherit from resource. We can type it in. You can also select it from the list here, and search for it here and then you to find resource. Let's go through the code. Since we inherited from resource, it already added the extends resource for us. Let's first add a class name. So we can use this class in other scripts. Then we add our properties, which will make exports. This way we can change them in the editor. Now that we have our custom resource, how do we use it? With this base resource that we just made, we can make different character setups. For example, let's make a mage character. First, we'll add a new folder here. Call this resources. Now that we have resources here, let's create a new resource. And let's look for character stats. There it is. Create. And let's call this Mage Stats. Save that. When we open this, on the right you can see all the stats that we set in our code over here. And let's increase the intelligence because it's a, it's a mage. And let's reduce the starting health. They're a, bit of, a bit more squishy, so. Let's do that here as well. Now that we have the mage stats set, let's duplicate this and call this warrior stats. Okay, let's open it up. Let's change these back. So intelligence is gonna be one. Strength is gonna be 10 for the warrior. And we got the starting health. Let's set that back to 100. Okay, let's do one more. Let's duplicate again. Let's call this Rogue Stats. Open it up. Double click to open it, by the way. Uh, let's set the strength to one, dexterity to 10, and let's make the starting health and the max health 90. A rogue is slightly more squishy than a warrior. And let's save that. Uh, 
Okay, now that we've made those resources, how can we use them? First, we're going to make a player scene. So let's right click and create a new scene. I'm going to use a different node. Because it's a player, let's do a character body, 3D. And let's call this player. Okay. Let's add a collision shape, just so we don't have that annoying uh, triangle here. Let's add a shape. Let's just do a sphere shape. It doesn't matter that much. Okay. Let's save that. And let's add a script to the player. Attach script. Call this player. That's fine. Inheritors from character body 3D. And create. Let's check out the code. First, we'll add a class name of player so we can use it in other scripts. Next up is a variable for our character stats resource. And we'll also add a function to load those character stats. The next variable we'll add is current health, which will be initialized when this node is ready. The last thing we'll add is the ready function. In this function, we'll add some output to show us the loaded character stats. Now that we're finished with the player, let's open up the code for the select screen where we're going to spawn the player with the selected character stats. Here's the current code for the select screen. Let's start by adding a variable for the player scene. This scene will be used to spawn the player. Make it an export variable so that we can set it in the editor. Next up, we'll add a function for spawning the actual player. For this example, we'll use a string to differentiate between classes, but ideally you should make this an enum. Let's run through this function and explain every line of code. First, we're loading the character stats resource file into memory. We're doing this dynamically by replacing the percentage %s with the character type string. Because we use a dynamic path, we can't use preload here. Preload reads the file from disk at compile time, and at that time, the character type is not filled yet. On the next line, we're instantiating the player so that we can add him to the world. But first, we have to load his stats before adding him to the world. If we try to load the player stats after we add him to the world, we'll get an error on the player saying that the character stats are null. The ready function on the player gets called when you add it to a node, so we don't want that to run too early. After loading the stats, we add the player to the world, and then we remove the select screen. Here we are, back in Godot. There's one more thing we need to do. We need to add the player scene to the select screen. So let's go to game and then select the select screen. In the player scene here, quick load, select the player scene. And that's everything we need to do. Let's save and run the game. First, we're going to select mage. And in the output at the bottom here, you can see starting health is 75, intelligence is 10, and the rest is 1. So that's correct. Let's see if it works for other characters as well. Let's rerun the game. Let's select the rogue. As you can see, the rogue has different stats, and it's working as well. One more time for the warrior. Let's click warrior. Starting health 100, strength 10, and the rest is 1. As you can see, custom resources are really powerful. There are tons of ways to use custom resources. This time we used it for character stats, but you could also use them for loot items or even types of enemies in your game. Be sure to experiment with them. Hope you liked this video. See you next time.